I just want to say before I start, I um, feel very honored to be here and share the stage with uh, many others, but especially Glenn, and hope to push this industry forward and uh, bring floating to more people. So I'm Bryce. And if I had to choose a relationship status with water, it would be complicated. Growing up, I was never the child who was rushing to dive into the deep end of the pool. And my anxiety peaked during a traumatic experience that I had during a summer vacation where a freak accident had me spinning underwater, completely disoriented, and fearing I was about to drown. And no amount of swimming lessons could have prepared me for that. But in the same way, I wasn't prepared for how much of a gift my first float would be. In 2012, I embarked on a road trip to Calgary with a friend of mine who was inspired by Joe Rogan to visit the only float tank in the area before there were any commercial float centers. And as I began to settle into my float session, getting used to this strange new environment, my body settled, the water became still, then I suddenly twitched, which disturbed the waters and brought me ba right back to those moments that were frozen in time. But instead of being overwhelmed and trying to distract myself, the safety of the float tank's calm allowed me to ground myself and quickly regulate my nervous system so I could see it all in a new light. Why was I scared, angry, and resentful? It wasn't anyone's fault. Just an unfortunate event. And with that, I let it all go as it dissolved into the salty waters and replaced with immense gratitude and joy. My first float was a gift. It wasn't just relaxation, it was liberation. And I've since committed my work to this practice, floated hundreds of times in different centers around the world, and heard countless stories that have echoed mine, tales of relief, peace, and rediscovery in a world that often feels overwhelming. For many years now, I've been floating almost every single week, if not more. The team at Spa Ovarium can attest to that. And since starting more floats officially in 2015, I've had the opportunity to launch and grow some of the top centers in Canada, the US, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. So we're working to level up the industry through expert marketing and inspiring more people to commit to a regular float practice. People who are choosing to embrace nothing so that they can gain more of what truly matters. Our stories, like the one that I just shared, are our most powerful marketing tools. They connect, they resonate, and they inspire. So how can we harness these narratives to revitalize our marketing efforts? It starts with your story and your commitment to floating. Many of you are here because floating helped you. We're gonna be hearing a lot of these stories over the next couple days, and I hear them all the time from the centers that we work with. But we've also heard a lot of challenges uh, that owners and staff have around sales and marketing. So to excel in sales, we have to first address our reservations. Personally, I've struggled many times throughout my career with sales, especially when it's connected to something I'm really passionate about. When it's something that I know can truly help so many people, but often the people who need it most um, can't always afford it or don't have the resources for it. But at a certain point, which was probably during a float, it finally clicked that when I constantly give away too much or I discount my work, I have to put myself in a position where I can't lead or help people properly. You can't float with an empty tank. 
So I invite you to take a moment to think about why you might struggle with sales, what your hesitations might be about promoting your float center, or selling someone on the next steps while they're in that post float glow. Take a deep breath in. Just let it go. Would you agree that the world needs more businesses like ours thriving, that are heart-centered and truly helping people in a meaningful way? Floating offers invaluable experiences for the mind, body, and spirit. And while it's essential to make it accessible, it's also crucial to make sure that we're sustaining the spaces that host these practices. This balance is what will pave way for more broader acceptance and support for those who need it most. In many ways, we know that floating sells itself once people actually experience it, especially if they have a few sessions within a month. <clears throat> we need to ensure that we're selling people properly so that they give themselves that chance to try it out and see what a regular flow practice can do for their lives, because it's not just a nice spa day. So why do you float? What's your story? What led you to be here right now? Remember Simon Sinek's words? Start with why. Stories inspire action. Yours, your customers, your staffs. Each narrative is a testament to the magic of floating. If you and your staff float regularly, you're able to pull from those experiences so you can guide your customers better helps you to ensure that they have a great experience. And it also resonates more because it's authentic, so it doesn't feel like sales. Connect with your audience, understand their journey, and show them how floating can continue to enhance their lives. Don't focus on selling a membership. Sell them what their life could be like by committing to a regular float practice. Connect with the benefits that they've already experienced so far and relate it to your own journey of how your float practice got better and better with more consistency. Whether it's someone with crippling anxiety who can experience a week without it instead of a day, or a busy mom that can finally commit to giving herself the me time that she needs to rest and be at her best. This is Alexis at one of our partner float centers, Float Station. She floats for sleep and to meditate on deeper levels. And to her, I would say my weekly flo floats are one of the most important ways that I stay well rested, even during stressful times, like the lead up to a float conference, or if I have a bad sleep. And here we have Stephanie at the float loft describing her first float as an indescribable feeling of extreme peace she's never felt before, which I'm sure many of you know. To Stephanie, I'd say I know the feeling, and I remember after those first few months of floating regularly, where that start, uh, feeling started to become more of my norm throughout my whole week. Everyone has a story. I encourage you to embrace raw, genuine content. A simple video that you create capturing a heartfelt story on a phone can resonate a lot more than a commercial production that doesn't have a narrative. And while reviews are critical, it's a small piece of your marketing, and they often follow a particular template that often lacks the depth and personal connection that a story has. I encourage you to reward your community members for sharing their stories. They're building trust with anyone who's thinking about trying floating for the first time or committing to a regular float practice. And it also builds a sense of community for your center and your community as a whole. Rather than devaluing your service through deep discounts or giving away freebies to those who haven't even tried it yet, Incentivize those who are referring others, uh, advocating for your business, and already floating regularly. And when you float as often as I do, glitches like this don't phase you as much. Empower your top community members to inspire the rest. Investing in your community and your biggest advocates will pay the highest ROI for you. We've seen this clearly in the data across the marketing that we do for float centers worldwide as we invest in highlighting more stories. And be willing to make the same investment in your marketing as building out a beautiful float center. The float centers that we've seen have the most growth and success throughout the years, 
have made consistent investments in their marketing. And I'll give you an example. I'd like to share a quick story of Ryan, who we helped launch back in 2016. He's been a partner with us at More Floats for more than five years. At the time, Ryan was launching the first float center in his area, which I'm sure many of you can relate to, and had invested a tremendous amount of time and effort into crafting what is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful float centers. Exhibit A. But he was struggling to find an option for his marketing to be able to make the same level of investment and ensure that his tanks were full when he opened. He scouted us out from the work that we did with Float House early on, and we worked to craft a launch campaign and a three-month uh, advertising effort to sell a founding membership. This resulted in more than 200 memberships by the time he opened. And it wasn't a fluke. Each time that we've implemented this launch campaign and focused on investing in the right marketing for a new float center, we've hit the goal of 100 members or more, often doubling it, all with the same level of budget for their ads. The more that we as an industry invest in leveling up our marketing, efforts to showcase these stories at the local, national, and global levels, the closer we'll be to floating becoming a household name around the world, closer to creating a ripple effect of calm, healing, connection. Remember your why. Floating can transform countless lives, but only if we guide and introduce people to it properly and authentically in a way that sticks because it certainly changed ours. If you're ready to launch or grow your center, please come talk to me at my booth, or feel free to book a call. And go float. Thank you. Yeah.